Jai Hind everyone, I am Navjyoti Sharma once again in front of you to give a lecture on a special topic that is synchronous motor, its application methods and uh, its starting methods and its uh, applications. Uh, this is uh, the topic which has been taken from unit 4 which is electrical machines of the subject uh, basic electrical engineering having the subject code KWE101T uh, uh, according to AKTU. Coming on to a synchronous motor, right? So, the definition of the synchronous motor that states that uh, an AC motor in which at steady state the rotation of the shaft is in sync with the frequency of the applied current, right? The synchronous motor that works as an AC motor, but here the total number of rotations made by the shaft is equal to the integer multiple of the frequency of the applied current, right? The synchronous motor does not rely on the induction current for the working as we have seen in case of induction motors, right. In these motors unlike induction motors, the multiphase AC electromagnets are present on the stator which produces a rotating magnetic field. Here the rotor is of permanent magnet which gets synced with the rotating magnetic field and rotates in synchronous to the frequency of the applied current to it, right. There is from where the synchronous motor term has been coined as the speed of the motor is same as the rotating magnetic field. We must have seen in case of uh, induction motor what is this rotating magnetic field is and how by giving a three phase AC supply this rotating magnetic field is being produced, right. It is a fixed speed motor because it has only one speed which is synchronous speed. So, the speed is uh, synchronized with the supply frequency and how they are related that are related with the relation that synchronous speed is equals to 120 f by p whereas what is f? f is the frequency of the supply current right and p inversely proportional to the number of poles right of the stator right. Now, first to understand its working in a detail, first we must know what is the construction, right. So, we will be seeing what is the construction for a synchronous machine as it is and then we will be moving on to synchronous motor, right. So, we know all the rotating machines that can be having, constructionally they will be having two uh, parts, one is stator, another one is the rotor, right. Stator, the stationary part, rotor, the rotationary part. So, how does the stator in case of synchronous motor different from DC machines what we have earlier seen. In case of DC we must have seen at the stator we used to have the field right and the armature used to be at rotating. But this time the stationary part of the synchronous machine is built of a steel sheet laminations having slots on its inner periphery and a three phase winding is placed in these slots right. So, the armature winding is always connected either in star right or generally in star right and the neutral is generally connected to the ground right. So, in case of synchronous machines we used to have armature as the stationary part right it is having various advantages right why we want to have armature to be as the stationary in case of synchronous machines let it be if it is a synchronous generator right. So, it is much more feasible, it is much more advisable, it is much more profitable if at all I have the armature to be stationary because I need to collect that much amount, uh, amount of heavy current as well as that much induced EMF I need to collect, right. So, it will be much more beneficial for me to collect it from a stationary member compared to if at all I want to collect that 11 kV or 22 kV from an rotationary member. Similarly, if at all I keep my field to be as the rotationary part what we used to do in case of synchronous uh, machines right. In that case obviously if at all I am keeping my field as this uh, rotating part so I just need to give two slip rings to give the DC supply and that DC supply is just 220 volts right. So that the field system that is not becoming bulkier so that the inertia is comparatively lesser and the motor would be rotating at much higher speeds, right. We need to only give two slip rings, right, instead two slip rings, two brushes. Instead, if at all I would have been having a 
rotationary armature. In that case, I need to give a three slip rings because I need to give a three phase supply. Right. Likewise, we are having many advantages keeping the armature to be stationary and the field to be rotationary in case of synchronous machines. Okay, coming to once again the rotor. So, we are now clear that in case of synchronous machine, the rotor will be the field system. But which kind of field? So, once again, the field windings can be of two types. One can be the salient pole type or the non-salient or which is also being called as smooth cylindrical pole type. Moving on to the very first one that is salient pole type which is generally the construction with a synchronous motor. Let me just tell you right as we are going to study the synchronous motor this is the main construction type which will be followed for a synchronous motor. What is the salient pole type? As I am saying salient, salient means important or projected outwards. So, in this type, the projecting poles are mounted on the large circular steel frame which is fixed to the shaft, right. The individual field poles are windings are connected in series in such a way that when the field winding is energized by the DC exciter, the adjacent poles have opposite polarities, north, south, north, south, likewise, right. One more feature, the load speed alternators generally having the speeds nearing 120 to 400 rpm or 500 rpm such as those driven by the water turbines or small electrical motors you know they used to have the salient pole type construction because of the following reasons. The very first reason is that salient pole uh, field poles would cause an excessive windage loss if driven at higher speeds right and definitely they are tend to produce the noise as well right. Similarly the salient pole construction cannot be made strong enough to withstand the mechanical stresses right at higher speeds. Since the frequency of 50 hertz is required, we must be using a large number of poles, right, of the rotor for the slow speed alternators. We have seen the relationship between the synchronous speed and the poles 120F by P, right. For the low speed alternators, the number of poles has to be larger. Right? And to accommodate that large number of poles, I need to have a larger diameter. So, these salient pole rotors are definitely characterized by larger diameter and shorter axial length. Right? What we can be seeing in this figure? Here we can be seeing the poles are projected outwards. Initially, what we have seen in case of DC or in case uh, we have seen the poles are actually inwards right here they are projecting outward they are being called as salient poles I am having the field windings being wound right with that the diameter if you just see that has to be larger to accommodate more number of poles so that the speed is comparatively lesser right. Coming to the non salient pole right where the poles are not projecting outwards right but it is a smooth cylindrical type rotor. In this case, as the construction is already, uh, we can be seeing what is happening over here is once again, it is a smooth cylinder construction of a steel frame which is having slots, inward slots and in these inward slots, the field windings are being placed. These are the field windings. The field windings are being placed in series, right? But where are the poles then? Right? If the complete uh, periphery is being slotted, where are the poles then? But we can be seeing that the complete periphery is not being slotted. The unslotted portion of the core, that means this, this is the unslotted portion. The unslotted portion of the pole that forms of uh, the core that forms the pole, alternate poles. So, one is north, south, north, south. Right? In this, what can be seen is, if you just see, this is the rotor construction. Right? So, where should be the stator? Outward, right. So, I must be drawing, this must be the stator to which I will be giving a three phase AC supply, fine. If this is the stator, can we just say what will be happening to the flux distribution, right. Here, I am having a uniform, more or less uniform air gap. So, that the flux distribution is uniform, it is a pure sine wave, so the output would be much more steadier, right. 
right whereas in case of salient pole if you just see right once again i am just drawing the state of if that is so here we can be seeing that the air gap is very non uniform here in this case i am having the air gap of this much in the polar region and in the interpolar region the air gap is very large so i'll be having a non uniform air gap a non uniform flux distribution and comparatively i'll be not having that much steadier output right once again as this non salient pole or i may say the cylindrical pole rotors these are smooth cylindrical one here the to accommodate because here this will be operating for turbo alternators for the speed turbines where i require higher speeds and for higher speeds i require lesser number of poles so i don't require larger diameter so here the cylindrical the cylindrical rotor type construction that is characterized by smaller diameter and larger axial length right to accommodate lesser number of poles and to have higher speeds what can be the maximum speed achieved right or what can be the maximum speed of an alternator that can be if it all i just say for a 30 for 50 hertz uh, supply if if it all uh, 50 hertz has to be the output of the emf induced so what has to be the speed driven of the alternator it has to be 3000 rpm according to once again the same formulation which is giving me the relationship between the sink and the speed the number of poles and the frequency that is ns is equals to 120 f by p now coming to the motor so uh, when i was explaining there itself i just said that generally the construction for a three phase synchronous motor consists of if at all i say the three phase uh, the the stator part that stator part is generally what we have seen just earlier the stator core is constructed of thin silicon laminations and insulated by a surface coating to minimize the eddy current in hysteresis losses right the stator has axial slots in it in which the three phase stator windings play is being placed generally this three phase winding is of star type right and the rotor construction the rotor construction is generally what we have seen is the salient pole type it can be seen over here the poles are projecting outwards right now coming to the most important part that is what is the working principle of three phase synchronous motor right unlike it doesn't uh, have it doesn't have the working principle of uh, induction right so there is no induction current which is making the motor to rotate right so here the working principle is magnetic locking the working principle for synchronous motor is magnetic locking and what do we understand with magnetic locking right that's very correct magnetic locking is something i'm having two oppositely charged magnets right one is north one is south right obviously if at all i brought them together right nearby so there will be a tremendous force of attraction between the two right and if at all i make any one of the magnet to move in one direction obviously the other is also going to move with the first magnet with the same speed and in the same direction that is what is being followed by a synchronous motor right so we'll be seeing how this magnetic locking is actually taking place in case of synchronous motor say if at all i consider the synchronous motor if at all this is the stator of the synchronous motor having two pole two pole synchronous motor having the field poles or i may say the field having two poles which is being energized by a dc supply right these are field windings this is being given a dc supply and the stator is being given a three phase ac supply right so when we give a three phase ac supply to the stator what is going to happen as we give a three phase ac supply to the stator we have studied in induction motor also there will be a production of a rotating magnetic field which will be rotating at synchronous speed given by 120 f by p 
the direction of which would be decided by the phase sequence of the three phase AC supply being given. Presently, if at all I just consider that the direction of the rotating magnetic field is say clockwise, right? Rotating at a speed of ns. Fine. Now, what is going to happen now? This is a doubly excited system, mind it. A DC, uh, a synchronous motor is a doubly excited system, same in case of DC. DC was also a doubly excited system. The supply of what you were giving to the armature was going to the field as well, right? So, the field and armature both were excited. Similarly here, right? The field is excited by a DC supply and uh, the stator is being applied or the armature is being supplied with a three-phase AC supply, right? So, when you give the three, uh, DC supply to the field winding, what will be happening? The poles would be created, right? Say north of the rotor, say south of the rotor, right? Three-phase AC supply, it will be having a rotating magnetic field. That means the poles would be created, rotating poles would be created. Say, supposingly, I say the poles created by the stator is here south, right? By the stator and north by the stator over here. It is also two pole, right? So, if you just see here, what will be happening? I am having the opposite poles being created in the stator and in the rotor, right? Because of that, there will be a strong force of attraction between the two opposite poles. The magnetic axis would be aligned of the stator and of the rotor, right? Because of this, there will be a magnetic locking between the stator poles and the rotor poles. Once this magnetic locking happens, then obviously this is a rotating magnetic field. At the very instant, this, this pulse is going to get changed. This is going to become north. But I but the, 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 the two of them are being already synchronized. So now the rotating magnetic field will drag the rotor into synchronism and make it to rotate with the same speed and also in the same direction as that of the rotating magnetic field, right? This is the force of attraction. You will make one of the pole to move. So, obviously with that, the another will also move in the same direction with the same speed, right? This is the implication or this is the implementation of the magnetic locking in synchronous motor. While studying this, right? It looks so very simple that if the magnetic poles are being aligned, then definitely one is moving, the another will also move, right? Rotating magnetic field will draw it into, into synchronism and now the rotor will also rotate with the same speed as that of NS and that's why we call it as a synchronous motor, fine. But even then, a three-phase synchronous motor is not self-starting, right? Because, you know, if you just see, one can be raising a question, ma'am, is that necessary that the placement of the rotor has to be of this same, this, uh, the same kind, right? Can't it be a little bit different? I mean to say, if at all, this is the stator, the rotor can be placed this, this way, right? I am having north here, south here for the rotor, right? And I can be having my poles created at the stator over here. In this case, is can I say now that both of them can be aligned? Their magnetic axis can be aligned, right? So that means a three-phase synchronous motor is not self-starting. It can be well understood, right? By this figure, if you just see what we were just discussing. Just see the figure. In this case, once again, this is a three-phase synchronous motor stator and in the stator, again, what I am going to do, I am going to give a three-phase AC supply. Once this three-phase AC supply is being given, there will be a production of rotating magnetic field, the direction of which will be decided by the phase sequence of the three-phase AC supply being given. It is RYB or RBY or whatever. Right? I am considering it to be clockwise as we have considered in earlier case, right? This is, these are the rotor, rotor windings and to this I am giving the DC supply. This is the DC supply what we are giving, right? But here if you just see, I am having, if now presently the poles created in the stator is say north, south and the poles created in the rotor is say once again north and south. What will happen? Right? 
magnetic axis are not bit aligned right now right but we can be seeing i'm having two common poles getting closer to each other in that case what will happen there will be a force of repulsion between the two poles right so because of that the rotor will rotate will try to rotate in which direction in anti clockwise direction right it is now now infected by the rotating magnetic field because of the force of attraction the rotor will try to rotate in the anti clockwise direction once it tries to do that in the very next instant what is going to happen this is a rotating magnetic field which is being created with two poles so at the very next instant the stator poles are going to get reversed initially it was north now this time it will be south it can be seen in another one right so now the stator poles would be different now i am having south created over here north created over here right rotor poles these are different uh, these are once made these are being made this is these poles are being created because of the dc supply being given right so opposite poles so this will be north pole south pole now what will be happening this time i am having opposite poles coming closer to each other right so this is north this is south so there will be a strong force of attraction right between the two so the rotor will try to rotate in which direction the, this will try to rotate here this will try to rotate here that means in clockwise direction right once it tries to do that at the very next instance once again it will be reversed the stator poles would be reversed instead of south it will be north instead of north it will be south once again the uh, the rotor will once again try to rotate in anti clockwise direction that means two fro two fro but because of the inertia of the motor it doesn't rotate in forward direction it doesn't rotate in backward direction it used to stay stand still right that is why it is being called that a three phase synchronous motor is not self starting right now if that is so how to make it start right the question definitely arises how can we make this to start so for this the another topic what we have to discuss that is what are the starting methods of synchronous motor let's go for it the very first method what it can be you know what can be presumed in this what the problem what we were discussing over here was that the two of the stator and the rotor poles are never getting aligned right so how to get them aligned that to the opposite poles comes nearby how to get them aligned right so that problem can be very easily taken out by using small pony motors the very first method that is by using small pony motors what are these pony motors these are small induction motors right so what can be doing is we can start the synchronous motor with the help of this pony motor the small induction motor is being coupled with the rotor of the synchronous motor and the function of this motor is to bring the rotor of the synchronous motor to the synchronous speed right once it is it is coupled to the shaft so obviously the rotor rotor of the sh uh, the shaft of the rotor in that case as uh, whatever is the speed of the uh, the pony motor the what that will be the speed of the synchronous rotor right the rotor of the motor so once the rotor attains this synchronous speed right then the pony motor that is decoupled from the rotor right so the synchronous motor that continues to rotate at the synchronous speed by giving dc excitation to the rotor through slip rings that can be very easily understood you know if at all i say this is this is the synchronous motor what we were discussing right initially what i'll be doing i will not be connecting it to connecting it to the dc supply right i'll be having a switch right then once i give the three phase ac supply we know the complete working we have seen when i give the three phase ac supply a rotating magnetic field would be generated in the stator right but you haven't given the dc excitation to it then what you have done the shaft of this rotor i have coupled it with a pony motor right i have coupled it to a pony motor so this pony motor will make the rotor to forcefully rotate right with the speed what is the desired speed that is synchronous 
right? Say if the sink in a speed is say 1500 rpm, right? So I'll choose a motor which is having its speed as 1500 rpm. When you couple it to the shaft of the uh, sink in a motor, so that will make the rotor to rotate with the speed ns, right? Once this is happening, when it is rotating at a speed of ns, I'll make the switch on, right? Once the switch is being uh, switched on, then the DC supply is being given to the rotor windings. The poles would be created, right? At one or the another instant, it will be happening that I will be having opposite poles being created. Here, here I will be having south, here I will be having north. At one or the other instant, this will be happening and your motor is kept on uh, rotating, right. At very quickly, this will be happening that I will be having opposite poles being created in the stator and in the rotor so that I will be having the magnetic locking between the two. Once the magnetic locking is being done now, the motor will continuously run or I must say the rotor is dragged into synchronism and it will continuously run with the speed of ns, right. Now it does not require the pony motor. The pony motor can be decoupled now from the shaft, right and the DC supply will be continu continuously given. That is the function of pony motor. Likewise, I can be using it or I can be starting with, with the another method that is by using DC machine, small DC machine, right. DC machine that means many a times the large synchronous motors these are being provided with a coupled DC machine, right. This machine is used initially as a DC motor, right. Likewise the pony motors were being used. They are initially used as DC motor to rotate the synchronous motor at a synchronous speed that means a speed which is slightly lesser than the synchronous speed that is done fine. Then later on the excitation to the rotor is being provided as we have seen in case of in case of pony motor right. Later on the excitation that means the DC excitation is being provided to the rotor. Now once the motor starts running as now the motor will start to run as a synchronous motor. Now the same machine will act as a DC generator and generally we used to coin a term which we will which we'll be calling it as exciter right. So the field of the synchronous motor is now then excited by the exciter itself, right. So it is a combination of synchronous motor and a DC machine which initially works as a DC motor providing the uh, synchronous speed so that it, the, the synchronous motor becomes self starting or it, it gets started. Later on the same acts as the exciter, right. The third one that is by using damper windings, right. What are these damper windings? And what is this, what is the requirement? Generally, till now what we have seen is, the synchronous motor will be having field windings, right? And what are these field windings? The, uh, the, the salient poles and these salient pole would be, the pole uh, core would be having the windings being attached to which what we call it as field winding. Damper windings and an extra field winding which is being provided, right? Extra to the main field winding, right? To make it self starting right. How does that look like if at all I say, you know. So if at all this is once again the stator, the rotor is the salient pole, right, to which I am having field windings. Initially once again I am not providing the DC supply to them. I am not giving DC supply, I have put a key to it or a switch to it, right. Once again, when I give three phase AC supply, by this construction it is definitely not going to get started. I am not giving a DC excitation, it is not a doubly excited system, right. Okay, now what we are going to do is, I am going to have another set of field winding in the rotor, where it should be wound. We can be seeing this is the pole shoe, right. So now in this pole shoe what we used to do, we used to embed copper bars or aluminium bars in this shoe, right. And these bars are short circuited at the with the help of end rings. If you just remember these are the terms which are common to 
induction motor which kind of induction motor a squirrel cage induction motor right or short circuited rotor the same way this is happening right so in this case what we are doing we are having the copper bars being inserted in the pole shoe and these windings are being short circuited with the help of end rings forming a once again a short circuited rotor this extra winding what i'm providing extra to the main field winding this is being called as damper winding i'm not giving any kind of supply to it i'm not giving any kind of supply to it right these are just the short this is just the short circuited rotor what we have seen in case of squirrel cage induction motor fine if that is the case now if at all i say i'm giving a three phase ac supply to the stator right the dc supply is presently not being given and i'm having this damper winding in the rotor will the motor start yeah definitely the motor will start exactly the same way as that of a squirrel cage three phase induction motor am i correct this is exactly or i must say this is relevance with the the construction is very much relevant to a squirrel cage rotor construction induction motor right so once you give the three phase ac supply the rotating magnetic field would be produced rotating at a speed of ns in the direction decided by the phase sequence say once again i'm considering it to be clockwise what will happen the rotor conductors you haven't given any dc supply the rotor conductors are stationary right because of the relative motion between the two there will be an induced emf in the rotor conductors right these rotor conductors placed in the magnetic field will experience the current and then thereby the torque the torque produced would be in such a direction to reduce the relative motion so that the rotor will rotate in the same direction as that of the rotating magnetic field but not with the same speed that is what we have seen in case of induction motor right so at which speed it is going to run then it is going to run at a speed which is slightly lesser than the synchronous speed which you call it as a synchronous speed nr right that is what you want you want your rotor to rotate at a speed which is slightly lesser than ns and when this is happening now what i'll be doing i'll be connecting or i'll be switching on the dc supply then once the dc supply is being given i'll be having my poles being created in in the rotors say those poles are here say south here i'm having north at particular instant this will be happening that here i'll be having north and here i'll be having south so that the magnetic locking will be happening and now the stator poles and the rotor poles are synchronism this rotating magnetic field will drag the rotor into synchronism and will make the rotor to also rotate with the same speed as that of ns that is what we want so that is the synchronous speed of the synchronous motor has been attained now what about the damper winding what it will be doing right you can't decouple it it is permanently being connected right it doesn't wants to be disconnected right why because because the working of this uh, damper winding that is just based on the relative motion between the rotating magnetic field and the rotor rotor speed now presently both of them are rotating at the same speed which two rotating magnetic field running at a speed of ns the synchronous motor presently running at a speed of ns that means there is no relative speed between the two there will not be any flux cut experienced by the rotor conductors no induced emf no current no torque by the damper winding right so the motor this damper winding will be just sleeping nicely inside the motor right and the motor will continuously run at a speed of ns the dc supply will be continuously given to the field windings right but obviously the disadvantage with the this damper winding is because of the copper bars being inserted right this becomes the rotor circuit becomes bulky also right and the rotor copper losses are very much higher so the efficiency of these kinds of motors are very much lesser right the losses are very high uh, so the efficiency is very much less right so these kinds of motors are 
lower uh, are uh, the applications of these motors are comparatively lesser right the last kind that is as a slip ring induction motor right this is very much <coughs> similar to once again the in earlier case we have seen the motor is initially started similar to a free phase squirrel cage induction motor now what we are going to do is we are going to just modify a slip ring induction motor into a synchronous motor right how that can be done just see if we just see the figure right say hey i am having a three phase ac supply this is what this is a stator the stator of the three phase synchronous motor generally star connected fine then the rotor the rotor construction is once again it is the same way for a slip ring induction motor if you just see the rotor construction is exactly the same way as that of stator if the stator is star connected the rotor will also be star connected as we have seen right this is the shaft of the motor right because of the slip ring induction motor we know that it is having the property that we can have the three terminals being taken out and being connected to the external resistance the same way the three terminals of the winding say this is r y and b the three terminals are taken being out r y and b and then they are being connected to slip rings they are being connected to the slip rings the three slip rings and then the brushes these are the brushes the stationary brushes the rotating slip rings and the stationary brushes to which then we have connected if you just see to which we have connected dual throw switches right dual throw switches one here one here one here likewise to which at one side if you just see of these switches i have connected a variable resistance this is exactly the same construction what we have seen in case of slip ring induction motor right that is one of the advantage of a three uh, slip ring induction motor that because of this variable resistance being connected to it we can be going for higher starting torque we can be starting this can be acting as a one of the starting methods speed control methods right many of the advantages right if that is so now what we are doing right now is the same induction motor slip ring induction motor can be now modified to run as a synchronous motor how initially if at all i go exactly like this right and i give a three phase ac supply to the stator the motor will run exactly the same way as that of a slip ring induction motor or wound rotor with an increased starting torque right okay now what will be the speed of this motor obviously the speed of this motor is it going to be ns no it is going to be nr which is slightly lesser than ns what we want right once the motor starts to run at the speed of nr which is slightly lesser than ns will be making the uh, the the switches to be on the other side right to the other side what we have done we have connected a dc supply to it right obviously i'm having three terminals to which i've shorted the two terminals right and i've made it as the two terminals a dc supply would be giving now to the rotor circuit once the dc supply is being given to the rotor circuit the poles would be created magnetic locking will be happening once the magnetic locking has established now the rotor will continuously rotate at a speed of ns so the synchronous speed for the motor has been attained right so this is the circuit for synchronous motor being started as a slip ring induction motor so these are the four types uh, of methods what can be generally applied for uh, the starting methods of synchronous motor finally coming to the applications what are the applications of a synchronous motor it can be applied for various various reasons right likewise for the power factor correction right power factor correction the over excited synchronous motor that works as a synchronous condenser right uh, the synchronous motor is having a property that it can be giving you a leading power factor a lagging power factor as well as uh, for uh, the the unity power factor depending upon the excitation states whether it is over excited critically excited or under excited right over excited if uh, the induced emf that is greater than the supply voltage in that case it is an over excited synchronous motor right keeping the load as constant 
right? In that case, the motor will work as a synchronous condenser, right? And can be used for the improvement of the power factor for industrial loads. Uh, generally, they used to have a lagging power factor. Another one, because the synchronous motor always used to run at a constant speed, NS, right? So, it can be used as a constant speed uh, for constant speed applications, right? Providing constant speeds at higher efficiency so that they can be used for centrifugal pumps, blowers, the line shafts, the motor generator sets, right? For paper mill, cement mill, etc. One more, that is improving the voltage regulation of long transmission line. So, a synchronous motor with a field uh, regulator can be used to control the voltage at the end of the long transmission lines, you know, uh, varying its excitation, by varying its excitation. Similarly, the last application that is it can be used as a frequency changer. A synchronous motor that can be used to drive the another alternator to generate or supply at higher frequencies due to its constant speed nature. In this case, it is being generally called as frequency changer. So, these are certain of its applications. Uh, the reference is what I have taken for this uh, lecture, that is uh, the two textbooks which we generally used to follow, that is uh, DP Kothari and IJ Nagar and DC Kulshesh. Thank you all for listening to me so patiently. Thank you.